subtle little thing you see behind me is the Renault Megane RS. Renault's fun French take on the family-sized hot hatch. Like its competitors such as the Volkswagen Golf GTI and Honda Civic Type R, it promises loads of fun with a big old engine and chassis tuned for thrills, alongside all the practicality of a normal Megane. We'll have a quick look at that shortly, but I can't go any further without mentioning this colour. It's called Volcanic Orange, is exclusive to the RS and is definitely not for the faint-hearted. Don't worry if it doesn't float your boat though, because it is optional and if you choose a less blinding shade, then the styling for the Megan RS is actually quite subtle. Although a well-trained eye will spot the custom grille, RS badging, these flag-shaped daytime running lights, not to mention this mean-looking set of 19-inch alloy wheels. Then when you come around the back, you've got this massive rear diffuser, center mounted exhaust, and the track is a lot wider than the standard car, which does give it a nice bit of road presence. While we're here, we may as well tick off some of the boring stuff like boot space. And at 384 liters, it's actually quite a decent size for a hatchback with more than enough room for the weekly shop and a good wide opening. Space in the back is again pretty typical for the class. I'm quite comfortable back here in terms of head and leg room. I'm five foot six for reference, that's my driving position, although those closer to six foot might find it a bit more of a squeeze. Now, while it does have the advantage over the Civic Type or back here, in that you can technically seat three people back here and there is a third seat belt, there isn't really anywhere for your middle seat passenger to put their legs. But the kids that are more likely to be back here will be just fine and there are Isofix anchors for their child seats. The interior of the Megane RS is again quite similar to what's in a standard Megane, except for a few subtle reminders as to what is lurking under the hood, like this RS badging, these beautiful sport seats finished in Alcantara upholstery, carbon effect on the door frames and lots and lots of red stitching. It's a little bit dark overall, but if you like your hot hatch interior subtle, then you'll probably like this. The Megane RS is well specced from the ground up. You've got a touchscreen multimedia system with sat nav, parking sensors, dual zone climate control, keyless go, cruise control and automatic lights and wipers. That's all standard, but this test car has been fitted with a few optional extras, including heated seats, a Bose sound system and a 360 degree hands-free parking system. So you do get quite a lot of bang for your buck, but then again, with a starting price of 45,000 euro, you'd expect as much. The Megane RS is powered by a 1.8 litre turbocharged petrol engine, pushing out 280 HP and 390 Newton meters of torque. With all of that power sent solely to the front wheels, in this case, through a six-speed automatic transmission. Now that is an awful lot of power for a front-wheel drive car to put down, but it does manage to do a pretty good job of it. And the Megane RS is a car that makes it very hard to wipe the smile off your face. And that is due to a combination of things, not least the ferocious amount of power on tap, or the brilliant cabin acoustics from that engine, but a fantastic chassis that really helps you get the best out of it. This is the standard RS. There is also a trophy version available, which will up that power output to 300 HP, add a sportier, stiffer cup chassis, and a Torsen limited slip differential to improve torque distribution, which this one does not have. But it's not that noticeable in its absence. And as I said, the feeling of control and balance really is quite good. And that is helped in no small part by Renault's four motion, four wheel steering system, which essentially means that when you're going at speed, the back wheels will also turn in the direction that you want to go, increasing that feeling of control. Then for around town at slower speeds, they'll turn in the opposite direction, increasing your feeling of maneuverability and agility. It does feel a little bit strange at first, but it, it is quite a cool feature. As for its ability or suitability as an everyday driver, the practical stuff is quite good. You've got the big boot and the space in the back, but it sort of reminds me of a hyperactive puppy or toddler that just always feels like it wants to play, which is great when you're in the mood, but that combined with the fact that the suspension is a little bit on the firm side can make the ride feel a little bit fidgety when you are confined to the suburbs. 
So unless you have a very exciting commute, it is a car that will very much have you living for the weekend, which isn't really a bad thing. One slight drawback to those weekend trills, however, is the price that you're going to pay for them at the fuel pump. The claimed fuel economy is 8.3 litres per 100 kilometres and CO2 emissions of 187 grams means that from next year it's going to cost 750 euro a year to tax. So as is the sad story with all hat hatches, it's not going to be cheap to run. One more slight niggle I have with the RS is this infotainment system, which I find just a little bit fiddly to use. It's quite difficult to pair with and stay paired with your phone, and it just feels a little bit unnecessarily complicated to get from one menu function to another, even if this portrait screen does make it look really good. Other than that, the RS is a very lovable machine, despite the high price tag. This one with options and the automatic gearbox comes in at close to 49,000 euro. But if you've decided on a front wheel drive hot hatch, you want something with a little bit more power than the Golf GTI, and perhaps not as out there looking as the Honda Civic Type R, then this might just be the perfect car for you. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe, and join us back here next week where it's back to plug power with the new Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. Till then.